Hi everyone, so this is the second lesson of the second part, and it all has to do with sampling. Don't take time with this, there's a, a lot of theory that's involved in it. So it says the advantages of using a sample rather than the whole population. So potentially, if you wanted to get a particular bit of information from 10 billion people or more, or 70 million if you're doing the world, I think, it would be pretty much impossible to get everybody. So a sample's better. Uh, so I mean that leads anything about it being impractical as well. I'm never quite sure why this is in here, why it'll lead to its destruction. <laughs> no idea what that means. Ridiculous. Um, so it says it may be required to describe a sampling method and the advantages and disadvantages. The bigger your sample, the better it is. Um, and what you can say to that, the bigger, it, the bigger the sample, the better it is, really. Right then. So simple random sampling, that's what you lot probably know as sampling. Everybody has an equally likely chance to be chosen. If you allocate everybody a number, and you use random numbers to choose your sample, and if the number comes up again, so if you get a repeat of a number, you just ignore it and keep on going until you've got your um, the sample size that you want. Now, stratified sampling is we kind of split up the population into groups which are called strata. You go for it, you've done this at school, it's where you put them in the same proportion as what you would have in the population. Then you use random sampling to choose from that proportion of people. Uh, right. The next one is systematic, so it might be that I check or uh, use every fifth person in a list. So it says here for a sample size of M from a population of size M, by selecting one member, the first K members of the population, it's a lot of different letters there, is big N over little M. Your issue here is if you were choosing every fifth person, so if choosing every fifth person, the other four people don't have a chance of being selected. The other four don't have the chance or opportunity. being selected, which is bad, so it's a disadvantage that. Uh, opportunity sampling is where you just grab people um, and ask them there, so you walk, you walk over to the canteen area and you ask them what they have for lunch. They're just sat there looking almost, so you can grab them and ask them. So that's opportunity sampling. Now quota sampling is one that you might have seen actually. If you're wandering into town and somebody stood there with a clipboard, they're not randomly grabbing people. They have a certain specification of person that they're looking for. It might be that they have to get 20 males between 30 and 40 who are wearing glasses. They have a very, very specific target of people. And there could be somebody else in another part of the time with a different target of people to get. Still 20 people, say, but different, like different specification for the person. So, but once you've got that, them people, so you know you've got to do 20 of these people between 30 and 40 with glasses, you just then do opportunity sampling. 
So as soon as you see one, you try and grab one. So that's what kind of quota sampling is. Uh, cluster sampling is where we split the population into smaller groups and the clusters are chosen at random and then the sample is everyone within that chosen cluster. That one's not really come up very often to be honest though. Which means it'll come up this year. Alright, uh, next page. So it says write down the sampling method for these. Let's have a look. So it says, use postcodes to divide a country, uh, county into regions, pick 10 random postcodes and survey all the hospitals in that region. So you choose it, you're splitting it up into bits, and then that one bit you're grabbing everybody. So that has to be cluster. Then group businesses according to type, medical, retail, restaurant, hotel, then select businesses from each type in proportion to their overall number. So we're going to go with quota. There is an argument there that it's stratified, but you're just choosing one bit of it. So you're just choosing, uh, choose your business there. Uh, see, so instruct a hospital to randomly select and then survey every 100th, so that's systematic. Interview the first 30, so that's just opportunity. Assign each car in a dealership a number, uh, and then use a random number table to select the cars. So that's random, isn't it? And then in a school, find out the number of students in each year group. Use a random method to choose the same proportion of each year group. So that's going to be our stratified. So we've got to be careful with like stratified and quota because they deal with proportion. So there's this discussion here for you to have a look at. Um, so it says down the bottom, for each of the four suggestions, name the method, uh, state if they'll be equally likely, or explain why not. State giving a reason. So I'll let you have a go at that. And we can maybe talk about it when we, when we go through the lesson. Right, so I've got random number sampling. I'm just going to stop it and start it again.